For every team's most unforgettable season, there's a year that fans want to wipe clean from the record books. Dominant displays and lowly letdowns, it's just part of the game. So let's take a look at every team's best and worst season of all time. We'll start with football's most decorated dynasty. While the 2007 Patriots may have been the most dominant team in club history, the 2004 Pats finished the job. New England set an NFL record with 21 straight victories over two seasons, including including the playoffs, Bill Belichick's team finished 14-2, plowing through opponents. Tom Brady and Corey Dillon had Pro Bowl seasons, while Richard Seymour was an All-Pro. They dispatched Peyton Manning and Big Ben in the playoffs before clinching back-to-back -back titles, their third Lombardi in four years. But in 1990, New England was singing a different tune. And the handoff and a fumble, and it's recovered by Govea. And he has enough blocking, and he'll go in with a touchdown. Fielding the league's worst scoring offense, the Pats produced a series of franchise lows. They won just a single game in 1990 and were outscored by 17 points per game losing the final 14 tilts of the season. Swapping coasts, Seattle produced their best season ever in 2013. During the height of the Legion of Boom era, Seattle finished first in total defense, scoring defense, and takeaways. Richard Sherman and Earl Thomas were all pros as the squad went 13-3, suffocating NFC opponents. And in Super Bowl 48, they dismantled the best passing offense in NFL history. Manning gets hit. Ball up for grabs. Picked up by Smith. Malcolm Smith. Touchdown, Seattle. It was a far cry from 1992 when the Hawks posted their worst win percentage ever. The main culprit, a truly anemic offense. No ball. Line drives it. And it's picked up. Seattle totaled just 140 points all season and the fewest ever recorded over 16 games. They didn't even have a wide receiver get to the 400-yard mark. The 2019 Chiefs made big plays and delivered when it mattered most. They finished the season 12-4 but found themselves down 24 points in the divisional round. Pass caught on the run for the touchdown! Mahomes with his fourth touchdown pass of the quarter. Patrick Mahomes orchestrated seven straight touchdown drives in an epic come from behind win. Then he guided Kansas City to two more playoff comebacks as the Chiefs won their first title in 50 years. But just seven years earlier, the team was at an all time low. Play action, Castle, look out, safety coming, ball is out. Kansas City won just two games in 2012. The squad lost by at least 15 points on nine separate occasions. A league low eight passing touchdowns all season surely didn't help. How about the greatest show on turf? The improbable run of MVP Kurt Warner and the 1999 Rams remains one of sport's greatest stories. Warner to throw. Going deep downfield, adjusting for it is Isaac Bruce. And Isaac Bruce threads his way for a touchdown. Coming off a 4-12 season, St. Louis transformed into an offensive powerhouse seemingly overnight. Bolstered by the explosive Marshall Falk, the Rams finished 13-3 and posted a plus 284-point differential, the best ever by a Super Bowl champ. But fast forward 10 years and the mood shifted quite a bit. The 2009 Rams came up with just one win, posting the league's worst scoring offense and second worst scoring defense. Chased by Chris Long, dumps it out to Chris Johnson. He's got some space, folks. Cuts back to the open field. Chris Johnson cuts back again. He's going to go all the way to the end zone for a touchdown. The offense was a wreck and the Rams became just the third team since 99 to score less than 180 total points. In 1990, the Bills were a force. With star power abound, they posted a franchise record 13 wins. And Kelly looking to throw on first down, could not find anyone. 
Oh, beautiful catch by Thurman Thomas. Led by Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas, Buffalo boasted the league's best scoring offense, while Defensive Player of the Year Bruce Smith anchored a top 10 D. Entering Super Bowl 25, it seemed like the Bills' arrow was pointing straight up. Well, almost straight. No good. Wide right. Despite the narrow loss, this squad would dominate the AFC for four straight years. The same couldn't be said in 1971. This Bills outfit went 1-13, a franchise low for win percentage in a season. Buffalo was dead last in both scoring offense and defense, posting a team-worst minus 210-point differential. In 2009, the Saints gave their fan base a celebration long in the making. New Orleans rattled off 13 straight wins to start the season and finished as the league's top offense. Drew Brees completed over 70% of his passes, and the defense boasted three Pro Bowlers. The Saints punctuated the season with the city's first ever professional championship. On the flip side, there were the Aints. A truly rough era in New Orleans football saw the Saints finish 1-15 in 1980. That's great. The defense was historically bad. New Orleans allowed more than 30 points per game, worst in franchise history. They lost their first 14 games before eking out a one-point win against the similarly futile Jets. In Denver, John Elway's swan song was a season for the ages. Led by the Hall of Famer and an MVP year from Terrell Davis, the Broncos posted a franchise best 14 and 2 record and secured their second straight Super Bowl in 1998. Elway going deep and he's got Rod Smith. And Smith's gone. Davis was the fourth player ever to rush for 2,000 yards in a season. Denver then dominated the postseason, outscoring their playoff opponents by 21 points per game. But things were much different before number seven's arrival. In 1982, Denver's last pre-Elway season would also be their worst. Mercifully, the team played just nine games in the strike-shortened campaign. They went 2-7 and seven and averaged a league-high four turnovers a game. It was truly a season to forget. Fly, Eagles, fly! The Eagles rumbled to a 13-3 record in 2017, but lost MVP candidate Carson Wentz in the process. Luckily, there was a hero waiting in the wings. Nick Foles became a Philly legend, marching a squad past the defending champs and delivering the team's first ever Lombardi trophy. The defense came up big down the stretch as Foles earned Super Bowl MVP. 45 years earlier, that Super Bowl scene would seem unimaginable. In 1972, the Eagles finished just 2-11-1, their sixth straight losing season. Philly produced the league's worst scoring offense, and their only two wins came against AFC opponents. The Titans may have been one yard short in Super Bowl 34, but their 1999 season was nothing short of spectacular. Do the Titans have a miracle left in them? Going to be fielded by Lorenzo Neal at the 25. Yeah, give pitches it, it back to Wycheck. He throws it across the field to Dyson. He's got something. 30, He's 40, got something. 50, He's got 40, it. 40, He's got 40, it. 20, 10. He's got five, it. End zone. Touchdown, Titans. Before providing an all-time playoff finish, Tennessee dominated in the regular season. They won a franchise-high 13 games led by Eddie George and rookie phenom Javon Kurse. The Titans defeated the Bills with the Music City Miracle, then Peyton Manning's Colts and the 14-2 Jaguars en route to their first AFC crown in team history. They could have used some of that magic back in 1973 when they were the Houston Oilers. 52 turnovers in 14 games, dead last in scoring defense, and a second straight 1-13 season. Houston struggled for a scoring punch. Many of their best efforts were working in reverse. Houston's 18 straight losses over the 72-73 season set a Super Bowl era record. Their lone win in 1973 came by four points. 
Our next stop is Chicago. Maybe you've heard of the 1985 Bears. Wilburn are in defensively. They give to Peyton. Peyton wants to throw it again. Nobody open. Now Peyton back to McMahon. Touchdown! Considered one of the best teams of all time, the squad bullied their way to just the second 15-win regular season in NFL history. Their defense boasted four All-Pros and were the only unit to lead the league in points allowed, yards allowed, and takeaways until 2013. The Bears' playoff scoring margin of plus 81 set a then-NFL record. They crushed New England in a Super Bowl laugher. Point eight. 1969 was a different story. Even with the great Gale Sayers and a formidable defense, that Bear squad finished with a franchise worst 1 in 13 record. They had the worst scoring offense in the league, due in large part to a revolving door at QB. No Chicago passer reached the thousand yard mark. The Chargers put together their best season ever in 2006, and a lot of it had to do with this guy. And the handoff to Tomlinson, left side, and he will gallop into the end zone. Charger fans are witnesses to history. Ladanian Tomlinson ran away with MVP honors, finding the end zone a record 31 times. The Bolts finished with a franchise best 14 wins, losing two games by just six total points. But despite all that, they couldn't reach the top of the mountain, falling to the Patriots in the divisional round. That's still worlds better than 2000. That ball is taken, picked. Monty Montgomery, has got a second of the day and he's gone. At least just chucking the ball up for grabs. The Chargers started off their new millennium in shambles, losing their first 11 games and finishing just one in 15. Their lone win came by just one point on a late game field goal. The New York Giants captured their first Lombardi in 1986. This bruising squad finished a franchise best 14-2 behind a suffocating defense led by MVP Lawrence Taylor. Montana back to throw. Going deep, it's going to be picked off by Lawrence Taylor. And he's got a lot of room to run. Taylor is in the end zone. In the postseason, the G-Men demolished Joe Montana and the 49ers 49-3 before beating the Broncos in Super Bowl XXI. The win was 20 years in the making and a far cry from the dismal campaign of 1966. That Giants team finished 1-12-1, surrendering the most points ever in a 14-game season. Their paper-thin defense allowed at least 45 points on five separate occasions and gave up an NFL record 72 points against Washington late in the season. How about the 1988 Bengals? They won a franchise-high 12 games behind MVP quarterback Boomer Esiason. Now he's going to run, gets away from one man, keeps the ball, and it is touchdown. Oh, what a wow, play. Oh, Unbelievable. Man. Cincinnati owned the league's top offense as rookie running back Icky Woods shuffled his way to 15 scores. The Bengals charged through their AFC playoff opponents and were just one drive away from a Super Bowl title. 14 years later, things weren't so rosy. The 2002 Bengals went 2-14, fielding the worst scoring defense in the league. Wide open receiver down the left side is Keenan McCardell, and he is going in. Since his defense allowed at least 27 points in all but three games that season, their offense wasn't much better either, finishing in the bottom five in scoring. In Atlanta, it's all about the Dirty Birds. Here's the give. Jamal Anderson left side looking for room. Anderson on his feet. Pulling into the end zone. Touchdown, Jamal Anderson. And here comes the dirty bird dance in the end zone. A 10-yard touchdown by Jamal Anderson. Riding an 1,800-yard season from Jamal Anderson, this 1998 Falcons squad came out of nowhere to produce a 14-2 record. Atlanta won its final nine games of the regular season, then shocked the top-seeded Vikings en route to their first Super Bowl berth. But in 1967, the Falcons weren't flying nearly as high. In just their second year of existence, Atlanta went 1-12-1, and, and that single win was by a point. They sported the league's worst scoring offense and defense. Definitely a year to forget. For the 2006 Colts, it was all about getting over the hump. Takes the snap, sets up, sets up, throws one over the net, intercepts it! Marlon Jackson! Marlon's got it! We're going to the Super Bowl! We're going to the Super Bowl! 
Indianapolis galloped to a 12-4 record and finally got past Tom Brady in the playoffs. Led by the big three of Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, and Reggie Wayne, the Colts finished with the league's second-best scoring offense. The magical season ended a 35-year Super Bowl drought. Now, rewind 15 seasons. Jeff George, here's a throw on first down. It's picked up, and the Patriots might tie the game. The 1991 Colts went just 1-15 thanks to a historically poor offense. Indy set a then record for scoring futility in a 16-game season, averaging just 8.9 points per game. They went through two head coaches and their only win came by a single point. Skip ahead a few years to 1998 when the Vikings generated one of the best offensive seasons in history. The catalyst? That would be a certain rookie named Randy Moss. This is Randall Cunningham, and he's going for seven more, and it is Moss getting position, touchdown. He's unstoppable. The combo of Randall Cunningham, Robert Smith, Chris Carter, and Moss produced a then NFL record 556 total points. This prolific offense catapulted the Vikings to a franchise best 15 wins and plus 260 point differential. But as you just saw, their dreams were shattered in the NFC Championship game. Minnesota fared much worse in 1984. Their defense was completely outmatched, finishing dead last in yards and points allowed. In fact, no Vikings team has ever allowed more points. They lost their final six games by an average of 27 points, finishing the season at 3-13. When it comes to the best season in Jets history, look no further than Broadway Joe. The New York Jets are the world champions. They have upset the Baltimore Colts. Joe Namath and the Jets capped off the 1968 season with a monumental upset that changed the landscape of pro football forever. One game before, Namath led a thrilling win over the Raiders. It was an unparalleled season and the peak of New York Jets football. Their worst season? That would be 1996. New York finished a franchise worst 1-15. The offense led by a lackluster passing trio of Neil O'Donnell, Frank Reich, and Glenn Foley committed a league worst 46 turnovers. The defense was even worse, surrendering at least 30 points in 10 games. Now, when you talk about all-time defenses, you gotta talk about the 0-2 Buccaneers. It's first and goal. Tampa Bay Buccaneers may ride to the Super Bowl with that one. Anchored by Warren Sapp, Simeon Rice, and Derek Brooks, all of whom had all pro seasons, Tampa stifled opponents all year long. After finishing the season with a 12-4 record, this ferocious group put together a masterful playoff run. They capped it off with a Super Bowl demolition of regular season MVP Rich Gannon and the Raiders. That was a heck of a lot better than 0 and 14. I've seen bad football teams. It's the worst I've ever seen. Wow. I never saw such a little life on a football team in my life. 1976 was the Bucks' first ever season, and easily their worst. An expansion team with a roster full of spare parts, Tampa didn't register a touchdown until the fourth quarter of week four. Their minus 287 point differential is still the worst in NFL history. 1976 was the start of a 26 game losing streak, the longest ever in the Super Bowl era. While the Bucks were in peril, the Raiders were peaking in 1976 with a team full of Hall of Famers. Ken Stabler led the league with 27 pass touchdowns as Cliff Branch and Dave Casper earned all pro selections. Throwing the bomb to Branch, Branch against Jones, Branch a great catch, five yard line, touchdown Raiders! John Madden's squad finished a league best 13-1. They survived New England on a last-second Stabler TD run before dispatching the rival Steelers. In Super Bowl XI, veteran Willie Brown sealed the deal with one of the most iconic Super Bowl plays in history. He's going all the way! Old man Willie! 2006, on the other hand, was a dark time for the Silver and Black. That outfit piled up the most losses in franchise history, largely thanks to a dysfunctional offense. Now Walter throws it, and it's thrown behind Lamont Jordan. And it's a live, and ball that's a live football. That was 
a backward pass. There's no touchdown. Qu- no question about it, and that's a mental blow. Oakland committed the most turnovers in the league and scored just 168 points, the fifth lowest total over a 16-game season. They failed to score in double digits seven times and lost by at least 10 on eight different occasions. Tough call for the Cardinals. Arizona won 13 games in 2015, producing perhaps the most dominant team ever. But the 2008 season was special. Kurt Warner, Larry Fitzgerald, and the rest of the Birds led a true underdog effort. The Cardinals went 2-4 and four down the stretch, needing a Week 17 win to get into the dance. That's when Fitz delivered a record-setting playoff run. Throw it back on the flea flicker play. Warner for the end zone for Fitzgerald. Touchdown! What a catch! Loads of time. Now he throws. It's caught by Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald, touchdown! Even though Arizona came a toe tap away from a Lombardi trophy, it's still a season for the ages. On the flip side, there was their 2000 campaign. Cardinals go for it on fourth down. Fourth and goal. Stop short. That play was a microcosm of the Cardinals' season. Arizona was outscored by a franchise worst 233 points, 29th in scoring offense, 30th in scoring defense. The Cardinals finished 3-13, and with two of those wins coming by a single point. In the Super Bowl era, the Browns' claim to fame came in 1986. Behind a superb season from Bernie Kosar, Cleveland won eight of its last nine games and finished as the AFC's top seed. Snap and set down, and the game is history. Cleveland wins it. The Dog Pound secured its first postseason win since 1969 in the divisional round. A game later, they were one John Elway drive away from a Super Bowl trip. Of course, on the other hand, we have the 2017 season. The struggling Browns were trying to bounce back from a 1-15 year. Instead, they became just the second team ever to finish 0-16 and and the first team ever to lose 15 games in consecutive seasons. The Niners have given us plenty of seasons to choose from. Strong consideration went to the 1989 squad, but we're going to go with the 1984 championship team. It was Joe Montana running the show, guiding San Francisco to the first ever 15-win season in NFL history. He's got time, Montana. Clark has it and he has got to have it, he juggles it. Dwight Clark is going to go in standing. But it was the NFL's best scoring defense that defined this team. Led by Ronnie Lott, every member of the San Francisco secondary went to the Pro Bowl. This unit surrendered the fewest points of any Niners championship team, and it stopped Dan Marino's historic 84 season in its tracks with a commanding win in Super Bowl 19. In 2004, things were a little less ideal. Warrior Niners pick it up, intercepted, Corey Cox, and he'll take this one the distance. The Niners lost Jeff Garcia, Garrison Hurst, and Terrell Owens that offseason, and the defense just never showed up. They didn't win a single game in regulation. Both their wins came in OT against the Cardinals. Not only are the 2000 Ravens the best Baltimore squad ever, they're one of the best defenses, period. Led by Ray Lewis, the defense allowed the fewest points ever over 16 games and pitched four shutouts during the regular season. In just their fifth year of existence, Brian Billick's boys secured their first ever playoff spot. Then they went and won the whole thing. That's it, the Baltimore Ravens, for the first time in their franchise history, are Super Bowl champions. Conversely, 2007 was rife with disappointment. Coming off a 13-3 season, this Ravens cast lost nine straight games and finished just 5-11. Behind Kyle Bowler, Steve McNair, and Troy Smith, they finished with a league-worst 40 turnovers. Overs. The last team with 15 wins in a season, that would be the 2015 Panthers. Cue the Superman clips. Newton, the quarterback, draw, diving into the end zone for the touchdown. Greg, he really was Superman on that play. 
Behind MVP Cam Newton, Carolina put together an all-time season. They won their first 14 games and scored a franchise-best 500 points. Their defense boasted three All-Pros and helped lead the Panthers to Super Bowl 50. We got a total inverse in 2001 when the team finished 1-15. That Carolina squad has the dubious distinction of being the first team to win their opener and then lose 15 straight. To cut them some slack, six of their losses came by three points or fewer. The biggest no-brainer on the list is the 1972 Dolphins. When you win 17 games without a defeat, that is perfect. Backup QB Earl Morrill, the one-two punch of Larry Zonka and Mercury Morris, and the venerable no-name defense powered Miami to the only perfect season in NFL history. They're also the only team to lead the league in both yardage and scoring totals on both sides of the ball in the Super Bowl era. The 2007 squad lost a few more games, 15 more to be exact. The quarterback trio of John Beck, Trent Green, and Cleo Lemon was actually winless in regulation. Miami's lone victory in 07 came in overtime. Back goes Brett to throw. Here they come. He's got time. He's throwing it downfield. He's There's got him. Wide open. It is going to be a touchdown to Andre Rison. And his first pass goes for about 50 yards or more. What a great play. In 1996, the Packers delivered their best wire-to-wire -wire campaign in team history. Brett Favre won the second of his record three straight MVPs, while Reggie White set the tone on the defensive end. Green Bay was easily the league's most complete team, ranking first in scoring offense and defense. They rode that balance to a decisive Super Bowl victory. In motion, left to right, it's Epps. Straight back is Ferragamo. Throwing oh. up the backfield, picked off by Hayes. He's at the 10, the 5, touchdown New Orleans! The club's worst season came a decade earlier. It was a rough patch for the storied club, who went 4-12 in 1986. The pack had a team-worst minus 164-point differential, cementing yet another losing season. Now, we'll jump over to Jacksonville when the 1999 Jags emphatically set the tone in week one. Dumps it and is picked off! There goes Beasley! He's all the way! Touchdown, Aaron Beasley! Under new defensive coordinator Dom Capers, the Jaguars leaped from 17th to number one in scoring defense, and the offense was no slouch either. Led by Pro Bowlers Mark Brunel and Jimmy Smith, Jacksonville finished a team-best 14-2. In the postseason, they demolished the Dolphins in a 62-7 win before falling in the championship round. Jags fans, you may want to look away, though, for the 2020 season recap. Lennon. In trouble, in the end zone, and down he goes. Safety. Like the 01 Panthers, the Jags picked up an opening day win and then promptly lost every remaining game. They allowed nearly 31 points per contest and recorded just 18 sacks all season. Not good when you allow 44 sacks on offense. If you look at the stats, Washington's 1991 squad is one of the best teams ever. On offense, Mark Rippon had a career year, earning Pro Bowl honors alongside Gary Clark and Ernest Biner. The defense was anchored by All-Pro Daryl Green. Together, they tied a franchise record with 14 wins and marched to their third Super Bowl title. Going deep, touchdown Redskins Clark. From 30 yards away, it's Rippon. The 2013 squad fared much worse. After an impressive 2012 season, Washington laid an egg. They finished the season just 3-13, giving up almost 30 points per game. Second-year QB RG3 fell back down to earth after a stellar rookie year. The 1978 Steelers really hit the sweet spot. The Steel Curtain defense was still on display, and the offense was led by league MVP Terry Bradshaw. He's going to throw. He heaves a swan. Touchdown. Lynn Swan put up the best season of his career, while John Stallworth followed tightly behind. The black and yellow went 14-2 and, and defeated the Cowboys in Super Bowl XIII to become the team of the decade. But there was darkness before the light. In 1969, the Steelers were reeling. After a week one win, this squad dropped 13 straight games. It was a low point in Pittsburgh history. No Steeler team has lost as many games in a single season. 
The Texans' all-time season came in 2012. Led by a whopping nine Pro Bowlers, Houston posted a franchise-best 12-4 record and 416 total points. Oh, and they also had this guy. J.J. Watt with the sack. What a play by Watt. Thrown down by Watt. That's a big, quick hit on the quarterback. The all-world defender earned the first of his three Defensive Player of the Year nods and helped lead the team to a second straight playoff berth. A year later, Houston started off the season with consecutive wins, and then it all fell apart. Shot from the gun. 49ers with a four-man rush. And then Schaub has this one picked off, and this is Brock running it in for a touchdown. In a monumental collapse, the Texans would lose 14 straight to finish out the season. Matt Schaub threw pick sixes in a record four straight games as the team's offense vanished overnight, dropping from eighth in scoring to 31st. We'll head back to 1991 now when the Lions ruled the NFC Central. Detroit compiled a team best 12 wins and won their first playoff game in the Super Bowl era. Of course, the driving force was the incomparable Barry Sanders, who led the league with 16 rushing touchdowns amidst another All-Pro season. But then there was 2008. 16 games, 16 losses. This clip says it all. Here comes Jared Allen, and he's out of bounds. Poor guy, I don't even know if he realized it. Detroit set a new standard for futility, becoming the first team ever to finish 0-16. The Lions were outscored by a franchise worth 249 points and surrendered 30-plus in 11 different games. And finally, we've come to the Cowboys. In 1992, the trio of Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, and Michael Irvin found their groove and marched the team to a 13-3 record. Not only did Dallas boast a star-studded offense, it reshaped the NFC landscape, defeating a Niners team that had owned the 1980s. In Super Bowl 27, Dallas thumped the Bills 52-17, ushering in an era of dominance. They go back to big day as Super Bowl champions. Dallas 52, Buffalo 17. But just three years earlier, the team was at an all-time low. In their first season without Tom Landry, the franchise seemed like it might fall apart. They finished 1-15 in 1989, getting shut out on three separate occasions. But Jimmy Johnson had a plan, and we all saw what happened next. <laughs> 